Okay, so hey everyone, welcome to today's class. So today we are going to study about light sail. But wait, we don't have a PPT for this. That's the best thing about light sail because light sail is something that you practically do and you understand. So it's it, it's a service that provides a lot of different softwares and different OSs out of the box for you. So you can go ahead and install WordPress. You can go ahead and install NGINX servers on the fly directly just by a few clicks on the console. And it goes ahead and spawns an EC2 instance for you on the background. But you don't have to worry about the underlying infrastructure, like how it does it. And anyone who wants to just get started with AWS, right? And who wants a specific capacity or probably a specific software can directly go to LightSail and provision that for himself, right? So you don't have to actually know the underlying uh, infrastructure, like how things are being provisioned and what are the different services that are being used in the background. So you can just go ahead and get started. So that's the reason why I, I don't have a PowerPoint presentation for LightSail. So we are just going to go into the console and we are going to start working with light sail and note one thing when you're working with light sail, it redirects to light sail dot AWS dot Amazon dot com. So click on services on top and you have light sail. You can see that it opens up in a new tab and you have light sail dot AWS dot Amazon dot com. And you can see over here right now we are, uh, it, it doesn't specify anywhere wherein we are in the specific region right now, but let's go ahead and uh, create an instance and you can see over here it's choosing Mumbai as our closest region, AP South 1A as the availability zone, but you can go ahead and change your region. So you can see over here, you can go ahead and change your region to any one of your regions where light sail is supported. So you're going to go with Northern Virginia itself and you can also go ahead and change your availability zone. So we can choose A, B, C, D, E and F because Northern Virginia has six availability zones. So I'm going to use US East 1A itself, right? And then over here, you do have the option of picking your platform, whether it's Linux or uh, Unix or whether it's Microsoft Windows and with Linux and Unix alone you have so many different uh, options but then with uh, Microsoft Windows you only have three blueprints uh, for OS only you have two blueprints and for apps plus OS you have only SQL Server 2016 edition right but when it comes to Linux and Unix you have so many other options like you can install WordPress you can install WordPress multi-site you can go with the LAMP stack you can go with Node.js you can go with Magneto you can go with mean stack you, you can go with Drupal GitLab so these are some of the pre-built applications that you can directly get out of the box. So let's try launching one with WordPress and let's see if we are able to access WordPress. Uh, and uh, you also do have the option of choosing OS only wherein you can choose between different operating systems such as Amazon Linux 2018 version, uh, Debian, uh, Debian 9.5, 8.7, you have CentOS 7, you have Ubuntu 18.04 and 16.04 which is the previous version, right? So I'm going to go with apps plus OS. I'm going to choose WordPress. I'm going to scroll down. So you can see over here the description about WordPress. It's it's certified by Bitnami and it's this specific version. And then you can see over here, you can learn about uh, it in the marketplace because these products are taken from the marketplace, right? And let's go down. So you can, you have some options over here wherein you can add your own launch, launch script and also change your SSH key pair. So let's, let me just choose that. So I'm going to go ahead and choose my SSH key pair. So I'm not going to create a new one, but I'm not sure whether I do have one in Northern Virginia. So uh, let's just leave it for right now and also let's enable automatic snapshots because this is pretty important for me because i need to have the necessary backup data right and i'm going i'm going to leave it to uh, a 12 gmt right so again you can choose your instance plans over here you can go with uh, price per month instance plan or you can go with memory instance plan or processing instance plan depending on the cpu you can go with storage depending on how much gb you would like and also the transfer instance plan right so let's go with price per month and you can see that we have 3.5 US dollars of, and the first month is free where we do get a capacity of 512 MB RAM, one virtual CPU, 20 GB of SSD storage and so on, right? So again, if you go to the memory, you can see over here, we get uh, 64 GB SSD with 32 GB of memory, but you can go to the 2 GB memory configuration or even the 0.5, uh, which is 512 MB of memory configuration and the transfer you get is 1 TB over here, right? You can go to the processing option and look at the different CPU options that it provides us with and so on, right? But for right now, I'm just going to stick to this uh, first month free, which is the 3.5 US dollars. And I'm going to identify my instance by giving it the name as WordPress, not just WordPress hyphen one. And you can choose how many instances you would like to create, uh, depending on which I believe, I'm not sure that an auto scaling group or a load balance will be created in the background, but I'm not sure. But for right now, I'm just going to stick to one instance. You can add your uh, tags, right? And go ahead and click on create instance. So I'm not sure how long this is going to take, but I'm just going to wait and let, I'm just going to see. 
And at the same time, you can also go ahead and look at uh, databases over here. So you can also go ahead and create your own database. So you can choose whether you want MySQL or PostgreSQL database and the respective version. So 8.0 is the latest one and for PostgreSQL 12.2 is the latest one. So we are going to choose 5.7 of MySQL. You can also specify the login credentials, the username and the password. And uh, if you choose not to create a strong password, you can specify your own password. And you can also go with the database plan as high availability plan or standard plan because generally if high availability is like it creates a replica in another uh, availability zone, right? This is something that we studied uh, that probably you guys would study when you are going to the database section, right? And then again, you do have the different uh, pricing plans and different options in order to choose between memory or processing or storage or transfer. And the price per month right now, the basic one is 30 US dollars, wherein you get one GB of RAM, one virtual CPU, and 100 GB of transfer and 40 GB of SSD storage. And you can also give your database a name and directly go ahead and create your database. Right? So the other options are regarding networking. You can see we don't have any networking resources created right now, but you can go ahead and create your own load balancer from here, which means you'll have to specify whether your load balancer is uh, across all regions or all zones within that region, which is Northern Virginia not across all regions, sorry about that, across all zones within that region. And you can choose whether you want HTTP or HTTPS and you have to identify a load balancer name and so on, right? Again, before you enable HTTPS, you should have an SSL certificate, which we should have created through ACM, Amazon Certificate Manager. And then when we come back over here, that will also be displayed for us, right? And when it comes to storage, you can also go ahead and add any additional storage, like create your own additional disks. So you can go ahead and click on this and choose your respective disk based on which you will be, uh, I mean, charged accordingly, right? And at the same time, regarding the snapshots, the automated snapshots, you can go ahead and create your own snapshots, right? But for right now, again, under networking, you do have two more options wherein you can specify a DNS zone or also create yourself a static IP, which is nothing but a public IP that sticks to your instance irrespective of whether you stop and start your instance. It's also called as an elastic IP, right? You can go ahead and assign that. Right now, let's go back to instances and we can see that the WordPress instance is running. So let's go ahead and click on this. And you can see over here that we can directly connect using SSH or you can see the public IP address and the username is Bitnami, right? And you can go ahead and look at the storage. We have a system disk of 20 GB storage. Metrics, you can see the metrics graph over here. CPU utilization and so on. And regarding the networking, you can also see that we get a public IP by Amazon, but it's not a static IP. And we do get a private IP, which is assigned from that availability zone. And you can see the firewall rules over here. 80 is going to any IP address, 443 is to any IP address. So therefore we will be able to connect from outside, but we can also go ahead and create our own load balancers and so on from here itself. And snapshots, you can go ahead and create your own manual snapshots and the automatic snapshots are created at 5.30 AM GMT, which is uh, my uh, early morning. Uh, I'm sitting in IST right now. So that is GMT plus 5.30 is IST and 5.30 AM IST depending on my time zone, right? And you can also associate tags. You can look at the instance history. You can also go ahead and delete the instance, right? So let's go ahead and look at the public IP and let's see if we are able to launch the WordPress website. Awesome, so directly you can see that it has already gone to just another WordPress website. 